Hey guys, it's John. Today I'm going to be walking through two problems, one on function composition and another involving a proof involving function composition and inverse functions. So to start, we want to find f of g and g of f, where f is from the real numbers to the real numbers given by 3x plus 5, and g is also from the real numbers to the real numbers given by x squared. Okay, so before we start, some important things to note is that it's important that for f of g, we apply g first. So it's important that the codomain matches the domain of f. Also for g of f, it's important that the codomain of f matches the domain of g. Now we're all clear here because the domain and codomain are the same for both f and g. Um, so let's start with f of g. Now this is just f with g of x as input. So what is g of x? Well, g of x is just x squared. So now we'll just plug in x squared wherever we see an x in f, which is just 3x squared plus 5. OK, and now for g of f, now we do the opposite application of g and f. So f comes first. So f of x is 3x plus 5. So now we plug in 3x plus 5 wherever there's an x in g of x. So that's going to be 3x plus 5 all squared. And if we FOIL all of that out, we get 9x squared plus 30x plus 25. And just to show you how changing the order of composition affects things, I have created some graphs on Desmos. So we have our f, 3x plus 5, that's the blue line. We have our g, x squared, that's the green line. So f of g of x is going to give you this purple line. Now, if you remember, that was the 3x squared plus 5. And g of f of x gives you this black function. Now, that was the 9x squared plus 30x plus 25. So depending on which order you do this composition, it's going to change the value of your uh, resulting function. OK. Moving on. All right, suppose that f from y to z and g from x to y are invertible functions. Show that the inverse of the composition f of g is given by g inverse composed with f inverse. So this first line is actually very important. So in order for this to work, we need that f and g are invertible functions because that tells us that g inverse and f inverse actually exist in the first place. So to prove this, we're going to use a direct application of the definition of what an inverse function is. So going back to our notes, we know that f of g of a equals b if and only if the inverse of f of g of b spits out a. So this is just the definition of what an inverse function is. We want to show that this f of g inverse is actually g inverse composed with f inverse. So we can write this f of g of a equals b if and only if g inverse composed with f inverse of b equals a. So to prove this, we just want to prove this definition here. All right, so let's start with the forward direction. So to remember to prove an if and only if, you need to prove if f of g of a equals b, then g inverse of f inverse of b equals a. 
and you have to prove that if g inverse composed with f of inverse of b equals a, then f of g of a equals b. So we're going to start by assuming f of g of a equals b, where a is an x. Remember, x is the domain of g. And b is in z, the codomain of f. And we want to show this. OK. So we want to find what this quantity is. And we want to show that it's actually equal to a. So g inverse composed with f inverse of b equals well, what is B? Well, we know B is just f of g of a. So we can plug f of g of a in for B. Now we can break down the composition of functions definition. So f of g of a is just f with g of a plugged in as input. Okay, and we can break down the composition of G inverse with F inverse too. Okay, so let's take a look at this. So one important thing to note here is that we have these two functions applied one after another. So we have F inverse with f of g of a plugged in. So remember that the inverse function was defined so that if f sends one element, so let's say if f of a equals b, then f inverse of b equals a. So basically, if you apply f and you get something, if you apply the inverse function to that output, you get back what you originally plugged in. So with that in mind, this tells us that this f inverse of f will simplify to just g of a, because that will give us what we originally plugged into f. Because we're sending g of a through f, the f inverse sends it back so we just get g of a as a result. Again, utilizing that same exact concept, but with g this time, we're sending g or sending a through g, and then g inverse sends that a back to where it started. So then we just result with a. All right, well, this is exactly what we wanted to prove for the forward direction. We've proved that g inverse composed with f inverse of b equals a. Now for the backwards direction. So we need to assume that G inverse composed with F inverse of B equals A for B and Z and A and X. So we're assuming the right hand side here and we need to prove the left hand side. So we need to prove f of g of a is equal to b. So let's do that. f of g of a is just f of g of g inverse of f inverse of b. Again, that's just taking the fact that we know that this is true and plugging in a. We can break down the definition of composition of functions again. So G inverse composed with F inverse of B is just F of inverse of B plugged into G inverse. Do it again for F and G. Again, just like last time, we notice that we have G 
with an input of its inverse function. So that tells us that whatever that input is, is exactly what we're going to get when we send it through G. So this is just F of F inverse of B. Again, same thing. We get B spit back out. And now we're done. We've shown that F of G of A equals B. Given that we know G inverse of F inverse of B equals A and just the opposite thing for the other direction. So since we've proven both directions of this definition, this tells us that the inverse of f of g is g inverse composed with f inverse.